Okay, so I found a model that'll work for us here. Uh, basically, obviously this is an old school Rhino and it's probably, oh, I don't know, vintage uh, late 80s, early 80s, I don't know. But uh, I'm going to sneeze here, sorry guys. <coughs> Excuse me. This has got a fairly pronounced lip. Now I couldn't find something that was inset, but the concept is going to be the same. Basically what we've got here is a pretty gnarly lip on there and what we're going to do is we're going to bring that up a little bit um, and again we're going to use the same type of technique that we did before uh, I don't like these seams here along the area where the engines are and and the uh, tracks so we're going to fill in some of these gnarly seams and then there are these kind of huge gaps here that need some filling uh, so let's go through that process uh, let's start with the big ugly ones first and I think what I'll do is I'm going to try and put some plastic in there, plastic card, or this is actually not a card, but just something to fill this gap. Think of it as a shim or whatever. And uh, what I'm doing is I'm coming in with uh, my plastic and trying to find a happy medium where that will go on an inset. I'll try and get that in focus for you. You can see kind of how that's sitting in there. And I'm going to cut that flush and we'll uh, we'll go from that point. So always have a pencil handy and I'm just going to mark that so that we've got the angle correct. Bring out the old Mondo here. Now there are all kinds of different products you could use to fill these gaps um, and uh, you know any of them is acceptable uh, I'm gonna use this plastic and then we'll get maybe a little putty in there okay so there's that now just to hold this in place I'm gonna use my Tamiya extra thin okay And again, try not to get this on your, your green mat or gray mat, whatever you happen to have, because it will eat all of the graphics off of it. Not cool. And I'm going to use my handy dandy little homemade tool that we made. I'm going to push that in there a little bit. Whoop. Okay. And that's pretty good. We still have some gaps in here that are going to need to be addressed. We'll do this on the other side. A little well. problem with this guy. Okay. And check both sides. Make sure we've got it pretty well whittled down there. Okay. So we've got this raised area. We've got our gaps filled to a point with the uh, with the styrene, and now we're going to have to start filling it up. So, what are we going to use for that? Well. I think, if I'm not mistaken, and I guess we're just going to have to experiment with this a little bit, but I think what I can do is one method I could use is the, uh, the super glue and the uh, baking powder. So maybe in order to show you that process, we'll do that on one side and then we'll pull out the milliput and use that on the other side. So we'll see how it goes. So what are we going to need? Obviously we need our baking powder. I know that uh, Detlef wrote me and said that he uses baking soda, uh, but I think that's probably not the best way, if you'll excuse me saying so, Detlef. Um, with the baking powder, I think it's less reactive or it doesn't shrink or something, I don't know. It's just what I've heard and I can't uh, verify that or or what but that's just what I've heard so we've got this ready to rock and I think we'll just do this side with that method and all I'm gonna do is I'm filling this Oop, or not I think I might not have a oh gonna have to clear that just out gonna, let that get in there 
and it will tend to flow in there so not a problem now the other thing I could do is use the uh, zip kicker to get this stuff um, you know solidified quickly to get it uh, super glue solidified quickly but uh, you know I don't think I need to do that uh, it does generate heat and I'd rather not generate a lot of heat on, on plastic if I don't have to I doubt that it would be enough to really mess it up but you never know so we've got our first coat on there if you notice what I did while I was blabbering is I just put the super glue in there and then I put the baking powder in there and I'm taking an old toothbrush uh, and filling it in and scraping it out or brushing it out I should say okay so that's a good start um, I'm going to try and get that in there and focus okay so we're starting to now, get the one thing I will say is that this stuff is a lot tougher to sand so oop, I just stuck my finger to the model I guess that stuff does run pretty well it's out here okay this is getting crazy look at this I'm gluing myself to everything what is up okay so when somebody asks you why you watch my channel it's the answer is to see what I'm gonna do next that is totally asinine okay there that ought to dry it up I'm not even gonna bother trying to sand that that that's mud that a little flatter yeah the one the one issue I do have with the super glue method is that it is really tough to sand sometimes just very lightly a little bit more with the sponge sanding stick be prepared to sand like crazy with this method okay so I think we're ready for the next application of the super glue and this time I'm gonna hold it upright so that I don't glue my fingers to the model again okay this time I'm try and get that extra off of there before making a bit of a mess as we go yeah don't do this on your wife's kitchen table or especially on the dining room table that could be bad what I mean by bad is that you could wind up in the emergency room at least I would okay Alrighty, so let's take a peek. And it's looking pretty good. I don't know if you can see that, but from where I sit, that's getting pretty well filled in there. Let's see if I can give it to you in this angle. You can see what's happening, I think. Do a little more. And actually, you'll be able to see here that we're starting to get to a point where it's also filling in that angle so that's kind of a, a happy thing it's you know not what we're going to use finally but it is pretty pretty handy that way less filling tastes great less filling tastes great okay yeah don't taste this please some Somebody's going to do that, and I'm going to get in trouble. And I didn't glue myself to the model this time, so that's a plus. Put it on low, though. Now, the other thing 
that you have to watch with the uh, super glue method is as you're sanding, you really don't want to get the uh, dust in your lungs. That's not good. You don't want to do that. Okay. So, there's the basic idea behind the super glue and baking powder method. I'm going to clean this up and then we'll start on the other side.